Obviously, this generation of GPUs are completely out. 7000 series from AMD, 4000 series from Nvidia. So it starts to get you wondering, what the heck is going to be happening next? Well, there are rumors from Nvidia that they're going to be launching their RTX 5090 and their RTX 5080 by the later half of this year. This isn't 100% confirmed or anything, but there are some rumors circulating around that right now. And Nvidia has also been testing coolers for their new GPUs, and we've seen rumors that they might be going up to 6 100 watts. So obviously the 4090 right now is about 450 watts. That just means a lot more power on the side of things. But then it makes you wonder, what is AMD gonna be doing with these GPUs? Well, here's the Steam hardware survey. This is where AMD's new 7000 series GPUs stand. And you might wonder, where are they? NVIDIA's RTX 4060 on the laptop has started to come up. The 4060 is also up here at about 2.5% of market share of GPUs, and the 4070 isn't too far behind, some with the 4060 Ti. So NVIDIA cards this generation be doing relatively well. And if we scroll down, I mean, even the 4070 Ti, which was a really bad value card, is doing decently now. But we haven't seen an AMD 7000 series card yet. The 4090, which costs like $2,000, is above it. Then the first 7000 thousand series GPU that we see from AMD is the RX 7900 XTX at a market share right now of about 40% or point not 40% that'd be insane 0.38% that combined with some investor reports from AMD they said their gaming segment revenue was 922 million, which is, you know, a lot of money, obviously more money than what I have. And it's down 48% year over year. And 33% sequentially is due to a decrease in semi custom revenue and lower AMD Radeon GPU sales. AMD themselves is a specifically telling investors their sales on AMD Radeon cards is lower, which isn't really a good look combined with you know 7000 series cards not being that popular on the steam hardware survey now you might wonder it's like oh the, these sales that's just because everybody bought stuff during covid that it doesn't matter but when you look at nvidia's quarter revenue from 2023 was 2.9 billion and that's flat from the previous quarter and up 56 percent so nvidia is up 56 percent on their gaming revenue whereas amd is down so you just see the disparity here are AMD cards even doing that well? Not many, like it doesn't seem like people are buying them a whole lot. We see some conflictions with this, with Moore's Law is dead here. He has some leaks from AMD uh, people in the know. He has said that RDNA 3, which is AMD's 7000 series cards, that they're currently selling very well. So there's like conflictions here. 7000 series is selling well, but their gaming revenue is down. So it makes you wonder what the heck is happening. And then there's even more reports. This is kind of older news now, but you know, with these new GPUs coming out, it's even more relevant. AMD giving up on battling Nvidia at the top end of their GPUs. Rumor claims that RDNA 4, which is their 8,000 series graphics cards, won't have high end GPUs. And then there's a confliction with this. From Digital Trends, they said, AMD might admit defeat at the high end, but it's for the best. Is this going to be good in the long term? AMD giving up on their top end GPUs. Is that going to be a good thing? I think we first need to talk about what their high end GPU market looks like right now. Obviously the 7900 XTX launch, and it's a very fast card. You see it's up here with the RTX 4080 head to head against the 4090. Surprisingly, is only about 21% slower than the RTX 4090 at 4K according to hardware unboxed here, especially when it costs like $1,000 less than what a 4090 costs. So honestly, the AMD's top end cards aren't bad at all. If you say you wanna buy a 7900 XTX, you get a PC part picker and this card is on here, but there's no like listings for it. It's like gone, but I thought this was like, oh, AMD really gave up. They're not making 7900 XTXs anymore. Do be relieved. They are they are out there. And that's just a PC part picker mistake or something like that they need to fix. I think one of the major things is that's not where AMD's strong suits are. So yes, we see that it stacks up very well performance wise to a 4090 even, but I don't think this matters as much as we might want to think. Like, why are we chasing the exact top end performance that we need to be the fastest GPU in the world or, or whatever, when most people aren't 
buying those cards. Yeah, quite a few people are because a lot of people spend a lot of money on their PCs kind of for no reason. So what it seems like AMD is focusing on is the price range of graphics cards that people care about and will often want to buy in. That is an area of the market that doesn't look that good right now. Like when we talk about $300 GPUs, there is not a compelling option from Nvidia or AMD. So you wonder if AMD is going to focus more on these markets and try to get some of the, the market share at the bottom, even though the, the margins on these products aren't nearly as good as like what a 4090 makes. I'm, I, I'd be surprised if a 4090 isn't like 50% margin for Nvidia. And it starts to make a lot of sense when you consider what the most successful GPUs have been from RX 7000 series as of lately. Back in September of last year, guys, remind me to never get a buzz cut ever again. I do not look good with one. The RX 7800 XT launched. And this card, it's been pretty successful. Like if we look at some sales numbers, now these are a little bit dated now. This, this was in November of 2023. So obviously it's a lot of time has passed since then, but I, I wouldn't think these have really shifted too much. We see that the 7800 XT, at least in Europe, Germany, where these sales numbers are being reported, sold 755 units compared to all of these other cards. AMD's 7800 XT is very successful. The reason why it's one of the best ones of the 7000 series is because it basically dropped the price of a, an existing already good product. So the 6800 XT and the 7800 XT, I'm not sure if it should really be called the 7800 XT because they're basically the exact same card. And the 7800 XT, all it did was it went from $650 before now down to $500. And we've seen it lower than that since then. So the 7800 XT, it's a clear strategy that they can sell a lot of GPUs if they're just good value. AMD doesn't need to target that high-end market. They just need to make a good value lower end product. But the 7800 XT is really the only graphics card that we've seen from AMD that really resembled the strategy. The only one that's maybe comparable is the 7900 XT, but that's like a $700 graphics card. And I don't think that many people are really buying it. It seems like AMD might be focusing maybe seeing the success of the 7800 XT and focusing more on these lower, lower end GPUs. It's still a really fast GPU. AMD's reportedly new GPU could match the RTX 4080, but at half the price. So there's rumors that, this, that these cards, that they're targeting around $400 to $600. I think what, I, what I've heard is they're targeting bringing 4080 slash 7900 XTX performance down to $400 to $600. And if they're anywhere close to a 4080, I mean, I have a 4080 Super. It's a very fast card, guys. Be just fast enough for almost everyone, even with the next generation of cards, bringing down the price to $400 to $600 when that performance tier of price is usually like $1,000 right now because that's similar to a 7900 XTX. This could be like a huge impro improvement on price to performance. And that's why maybe AMD isn't focusing on these high-end ones. This would resemble a strategy like from RDNA 1 back in 2018. The RX 5700 XT was a really good value GPU for $400. And it's still a good value GPU today if you find it used. Yeah, this card was really good. It's comparable to the RTX 2070. Yeah, the 2070 was a $500 card and they performed about the same. So the 5700 XT just was good value all around and very competitive. And when I go back to the Steam hardware survey here, that is the one of the first GPUs that show up on this list that is dedicated graphics is the RX 5700 XT at about 0.64 market share, at least the Steam hardware survey, which means 5700 XT, I mean, that was a successful strategy. They got graphics cards at good price to performance at just good value. What we care about on the PC gaming side of things is just good freaking value. That could explain one of the reasons why AMD isn't targeting the high end of GPUs, but 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 there's other parts of this story. Now, again, I'm getting a lot of this information from Moore's Law is Dead, so go check out his video. Everything's going to be linked in the description. What Tom is talking about here, AMD's first approach for a, a top-end RDNA 4 GPU, 8000 series GPU, would be to combine two RDNA 4 GPUs together and make this giant chip. And at the moment, that just isn't affordable. Now, would it have been the strongest card? Maybe, but it may have cost $2,500. So it makes you wonder if AMD is even considering doing a high-end GPU market for this generation. They might not see that it matters anyways, and people just aren't gonna buy it because it costs so much. It comes at a couple other reasons. And one of those big things is ray tracing. 
And you might be screaming at me, it's like, hey, ray tracing doesn't matter. Yeah, most of the time, like I personally don't play with ray tracing that much because it's such a large performance hit for really debatable performance gain or like visual gains. Like, eh, it looks a little bit better, but it isn't earth shattering to me right now. You know, just logically, graphics are most likely going to be going into a direction of ray tracing because accurately simulating light in a game. That's what ray tracing does. That's probably the direction we're heading in. AMD's cards right now, they are just way further behind in ray tracing. And even when it comes to Intel, Intel on their first generation of GPUs was beating AMD's RDNA 3 second generation ray tracing GPUs. It's kind of embarrassing to be beaten by, well, I mean, not embarrassing, Intel's a big company, but it's kind of embarrassing to be beaten by Intel on their first go at it. So it screams to me that AMD needs to change something big, or at least what we're hearing from rumors right now is that AMD is changing something pretty big. AMD to redesign ray tracing hardware and RDNA 4, so 8000 series graphics cards, that they're actually going to be making dedicated new ray tracing accelerators on their cards, because at the moment, I know this is kind of some some nerd stuff, but AMD doesn't actually have like ray tracing. I mean, they call them ray tracing accelerators, but they basically work on the texture mapping units. As far as I know, they aren't really made for ray tracing. It's kind of a roundabout way of doing it. And that makes it just probably less efficient than what Nvidia is doing or Intel is doing. So AMD has invested the time. They see that ray tracing is probably going to be the future. And what they're looking at is making dedicated accelerators on their cards. AMD is going to be changing this for RDNA 4. It might not be ready because basically they're building ray tracing from the ground up again. That is probably the likely area that they're going through is like AMD isn't ready to make this technology. They're just going to take this time to work on their technology and get their features up parity with Nvidia and even Intel. And that brings me to another area where AMD has really been struggling and that's with upscaling. AMD is upscaling. <laughs> Bro, they got they got big boyed by Intel on their first go at it too. Like Intel GPUs have a lot of driver problems and stuff, but their software, their ray tracing and their upscaling with XESS has been beating AMD even though AMD has been working on this longer with FSR. You can check out this video I made on um, XCSS 1.3. It's a huge update and you can use this on your AMD graphics cards to get better upscaling with the same performance. And when you're paying so much for a GPU, I can't justify because upscaling is definitely going to be an essential technology. Like it gives you more performance at almost no visual hit for the game. And sometimes the visual hit can actually look better than what the native game would be. Sometimes I prefer to have upscaling on. Like a lot of times with DLSS, it looks so good. I would rather turn upscaling on. Plus I'm getting a bonus of performance. You know what I mean? But that isn't always the case with AMD with their FSR technology. That needs to be caught up too. And AMD again might be taking this generation to kind of ease things out to make sure their feature parity with Nvidia and even Intel GPUs now. And what we're seeing is maybe some progress on that because I made a video on this too. FSR 3.1 was announced and it seems like they have improved the image quality of it quite a bit. Now we're still yet to actually see it released yet to actually confirm this for ourselves. But in a lot of cases here, it looks like AMD is improving their upscaling technology quite a bit. And also they're allowing some new features with frame generation with FSR 3. AMD's technologies might just need some more time in the oven and they're taking this time to work on that. But part of this makes me worry. You know, they're going to be spending all this time doing like feature parity. They're trying to get their upscaling and ray tracing caught up to Nvidia. But if you notice, just with AMD's history on GPUs, they're always catching up. Uh, Nvidia, like they released ray tracing first. They've had so much time to develop it. They work with developers too to put it in games like with Cyberpunk or with Alan Wake. They they can show out their technologies. They got things like ray reconstruction worked in with their, their DLSS tech. Like Nvidia so far ahead of AMD when it comes to ray tracing. And then even with DLSS upscaling, Nvidia was first to that too. Definitely put Nvidia GPUs, especially on the higher end price bracket, way ahead of what AMD could, I would consider with AMD. But it just makes me wonder, 
NVIDIA is always first with this stuff. How is AMD going to catch them? Like, is NVIDIA just going to make something else? You know what I mean? NVIDIA has big AI money now. NVIDIA is one of the most valuable companies on the planet. I think they could probably throw some money at gaming just to put themselves ahead. I'm not sure, like, like AMD playing catch up, they got to play ahead, even though they're taking this time to step back and work on their stuff. If it's not going to turn out that well in the long term we'll see how it goes obviously if things are priced well people will buy them okay and if their features get close enough to that people don't care people will buy them we'll see how it goes i'm excited for rdna 4 i'm about to say 3 it seems like also rdna 5 is not as far as we would think it is because amd might be just using rdna 4 to pass the time until they get to rdna 5 and that's why they're just being competitive with prices and stuff let me know what you think about this whole RDNA 4 situation. That's been it for me. AMD gave up this generation, but I guess time will tell. I'm gonna see you in the next one. Have a good one and uh, peace.